The Order 1886 is like the following statement. Look at what we can do in games now. Look, isn't this a canvas of visual excellence? In case of the Order 1886, that is most certainly agreeable. However, the game has been under much scrutiny for its linear gameplay, quick time events and cinematic style. There were negatives being tossed around left, right and centre and it had me worried. Very worried. I was very excited about the Order 1886 due to its mythical Victorian London setting, the knights at the round table and the fact that it was a new AAA IP. After finally getting to play the game, I was both happy and confused. Happy in the fact that I found myself enjoying the game immensely, and confused as how to some establishments had rated this game so poorly. I was expecting a travesty, but in fact, the Order has some incredible merits that are being overshadowed by its negatives. The Order 1886 is without a doubt one of the most visually incredibly games I, and most likely you, will ever play to date. It looks like a film, especially because it's presented in 16x9 letterbox, which adds that cinematic flair. The transition from cutscene to gameplay is absolutely flawless. It's smooth and free-flowing. The game is simply jaw-dropping from start to finish. Even the minor details are something to adore. Not only is this game visually stunning, but the sound design is also fantastic. The sound design in this game puts many other games to shame. The atmosphere is brilliantly realised with subtle sounds that really bring the world around you to life. It creates an experience that you feel a part of. The voice acting is some of the best you can find in a video game as well. The soundtrack is also sombre and unnerving, which sets the mood and tone throughout the game. The production values alone are something to admire, and to think Ready at Dawn went from PSP games to this? It's pretty damn impressive. 1800s London is dark, depressive and thick with atmosphere, smog, rain and talks of Jack the Ripper walking the streets. The world and law are brilliant and if you love mythology and history such as King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table, then you're going to certainly enjoy what's on offer here. Everything to your liking thus far? Quite. The Order story follows the Knight Sir Galahad, one of the most combat wise men among the Order of Knights. He finds himself shrouded in a deep conspiracy that takes him on a very dangerous quest, leaving him questioning his own beliefs. Without giving too much away, you can expect mystery, treachery, action, revenge, and of course, death. There's a good story here, which of course, it, it's subjective, but I personally enjoyed it. I love the era it's set in, and that there's an order of knights protecting queen and country. The story is pushed forward by some stunning cutscenes, and they absolutely look beautiful. But unfortunately, they interrupt the gameplay, especially when you're getting into combat and having fun playing. In fact, it almost feels like you're interrupting the game itself, as each fight just leads to another cutscene with more exposition. Imagine watching a movie and then getting 5 to 10 minutes to move the protagonist around the set. <laughs> Sally, this is where we get the more shoddy side of the order. Gameplay isn't exactly the strong point here. Sure, it looks nice when you push forward and walk, and the animations look lovely, but playing it can be a little plain. Shooting enemies is good, but it isn't varied or fun enough to warrant a positive reaction. It's all very mundane. Sure, you can snap a guy's neck with a crunch or blow someone's legs off with a shotgun. That's great, but there's not much else to actually do. There's also very little exploration in the order, which is a huge disappointment. Even though the game is a linear adventure, it would have been nice to have the option to wander off the beaten track just to explore the world that's around you. Games like Evil Within managed to add exploration during its campaign, and I expected the order to follow suit, but that simply hasn't happened. Collectibles or items of interest are also pretty sparse. There are a few interesting audio diaries, but other things like interactive objects that can be observed seem a bit pointless, and the game could have had more content to discover to tell you about the world and the people that inhabit it, much like when you found the diaries in the Resident Evil games. It all seems a little lacklustre, and you, you find yourself going from A to B with very little in between. Combat wise, there's nothing special. You won't be doing anything you already haven't done before. You'll get into cover, pop out, and then, well, shoot people. 
There's also a bullet time ability that lets you take about three or four enemies down with a handgun in breakneck speed. Of course, there's some interesting weapons as well, such as the arc cannon or the thermite cannon, and they are pretty fun to use. You can also do melee takedowns that are both visceral and fun to watch. And, well, basically, it all looks really, really nice. The main gripe is that there's little else to spice up the combat. The enemies aren't very varied and usually a mix of lethal shotgunners, which are extremely annoying, and your average grunts. And at certain stages in the game you'll encounter the deadly lycan, which is better known as a werewolf. It usually attacks and retreats, similar to one of the creatures from Dead Space 2. Other times there'll be a 1 vs 1 quick time event, but you're basically observing rather than doing, and these enemies could have been a lot more fun to fight. It feels like there's something missing that makes each encounter thrilling. The sound design and visuals create a great illusion that everything is awesome, but it's the video game bit that's lacking. The bit that both needs to be fun and varied. In this circumstance, the gameplay is simply not at a good enough standard. Quick time events are also en masse, however the way they're implemented seem a bit pointless and unimaginative. In combat a missed button press can result in an instant death, rather than taking a hit and branching off to a different combat section like you'd see in Heavy Rain or The Wolf Among Us, which would have made more sense. In fact, the order would have benefited heavily if it borrowed some aspects from those games previously mentioned, such as choosing a different dialogue option, or making choices that may result in a consequence of resulting in new outcomes throughout the story, thus making the game story more dynamic and adding more reason to replay the game. I hope this is something Ready at Dawn consider if they ever get to do a sequel. There needs to be more power to the player. I understand they want to tell a story, but it falls flat by not letting the player be a part of it. Another major talking point about the order was the game's length after YouTube uploaded a five and a half hour playthrough. Despite it being confirmed as a speedrun, it created plenty of outcry. And I have to say, it took me a little longer to beat the game. I'd say maybe seven to eight hours, as I spent most of my time reattaching my jaw after it fell off several times due to the game's phenomenal visuals. Game length and content does lead to an interesting talking point, however. One I don't think will ever end. Now, I remember when Alien Isolation was criticised for being too long, yet if it could have been finished in around, say, six hours, would there have been the same outcry? Another argument is, does the Order have too many non-skippable cutscenes that have a larger ratio to actual gameplay? For me, I would say it's around 50-50, but the gameplay does require some work, or maybe a lot of work, perhaps. Another argument is, does the game warrant its £50 price tag, especially since it lacks multiplayer or any kind of replayability? This is something to consider, especially if you're not fond of splashing out your cash on a short experience. I would recommend waiting for the price to reduce, just as I'd recommend that you should give this game a go. It's an interesting experience, and I urge anyone to give it a try. I could go on about how the order could have been this or that, but overall it's a good start. It's not a great game, but it's in no way a terrible game either, which some may want you to believe. After playing through the game it left me wanting. I want to see more of it, play more of it, see more of the will created and discover more of its secrets. The Order 1886 is like a flawed diamond, both beautiful and stunning to behold, but it's rough around the edges. The Order also could have done with more polished and refined gameplay to keep things interesting. Set pieces like the Battle over Westminster Bridge were too few, and there needed to be more intense firefights and stronger game mechanics, such as letting the player have more choice. I hope the harsh assault of criticism hasn't shattered hopes of a sequel, because The Order has laid a great foundation for a new franchise, and it's something I really hope to see again in the next few years. Ready at Dawn have indeed put a lot of effort in with the Order 1886. They have nailed the visuals and sound design and have created one of the best looking games to date. 
Despite the flaws with the gameplay, I honestly think they've done a good job for their first big title. I look forward to the day I can say they've done a great one. Roll on the order, 1887. Get <laughs> 